Hello there, this is Glenn Berry and I'm back with another build video. This time we're going to put together a system that uses an MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard. I will be assembling the system on an open bench table test bench for the initial testing. More details about the components are in the video description. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. So let's get started. For this build I'm going to use the popular MSI B450 Tomahawk motherboard. This motherboard was introduced back in December of 2018 and it supports first, second, and third generation Ryzen processors. And there's probably going to be a BIOS update that will make it support fourth generation Ryzen processors, although personally I would not use this motherboard for a fourth generation Ryzen. So at any rate, you have this motherboard and then there's a slightly newer model called the B450 Tomahawk Max. And the only difference between the two is that the Max has a larger BIOS and it's much prettier looking with a few more features, but there's no other feature differences or functional differences between those two motherboards. So that's the board we're gonna use for this build. And then once you have this, what you're gonna to wanna to do is go to the support section of their website and that's where you can get the BIOS updates that you're probably going to need and you're also going to be able to get your driver updates right here. So going to the MSI website and downloading what you need ahead of time is a really good idea. The first step in this build is to install the CPU in the motherboard. And notice the little silver triangle on the CPU and how that aligns with the silver mark on the motherboard. You can also double check by looking at the Ryzen lettering on the heat spreader and how that aligns the way you see in the picture. Once you get it in there, you lower the lever down and that locks the CPU into place on the motherboard. The next step you're going to have to do with most aftermarket CPU coolers is to remove the stock retainer brackets like you see right here. And there's going to be two screws in each bracket and you take both of those off. And once you do that, then you're going to notice that there's a back plate on the back side and the underside of the motherboard that's going to fall off. So be aware of that. It's a fairly heavy metal plate that's going to fall off. And we're going to need to pick that up and put it back in place before we install the stock CPU cooler that came with this processor. And by the way, this is a Ryzen 5 2600 processor, which is a great choice for this particular motherboard. You know, you can find those used really inexpensively, and it was a good processor. It's a six-core, 12-thread processor, and that's what the backplate looks like. So just make sure you don't lose that. You're going to need that very soon when you actually mount the CPU cooler. Just for reference, that's what that backplate looks like on the underside of the motherboard, and you have to put it back in place before you mount the CPU cooler. The next step is going to be to install the M.2 SSD. So you have to remove that little tiny screw right there. And a magnetic screwdriver is very handy when you're doing this because that screw is easy to lose. Then you just pop the M.2 in there. There's a slot on one side so it only goes in one particular way. And then you hold it down and just put the screw back in. And that's where the magnetic screwdriver is handy because it lets you do this with one hand. And there you go. It's tightened down. The next step will be installing that back plate and you need to flip the motherboard over and make sure you find the holes where the back plate goes back in there and then flip it over and hold it in place and set it down on something so that back plate is held where it needs to be and you can see the pins poking out of the holes around the CPU. This image is from a Gamers Nexus mod mat. It shows their recommended application pattern for thermal paste for an AMD Ryzen processor. So now let's try to do it for real. I'm going to try to lay down a thin bead of thermal paste on top of that integrated heat spreader. And this might be a little bit harder to do than it looks the very first time. And I'm obviously not doing it perfectly, but honestly, you should not sweat this. You want enough on there to cover the entire heat spreader when the CPU cooler is pressed down on it. And that's really the most important thing. The next step in the build is to install the CPU cooler. In this case, we're using the stock AMD cooler that comes in the box. And you tighten down the four screws on here, very similar to how you do the lug nuts on a car tire. So you start at one corner and tighten it down a little bit. And then you switch to the opposite corner and tighten that one down just a little bit. And then you're going to go around a star pattern, basically. So we're going to go from the top left 
to the top right and tighten that screw down just a little bit. And then after that, we'll go down to the bottom left and tighten it down just a little bit. And you repeat this pattern until all the screws are fully tightened down. And this is a lot easier, by the way, than an Intel stock cooler. Those are very difficult to mount. And so we'll go ahead and get all these tightened all the way down. And by the way, this cooler is pretty good. You don't absolutely have to buy an aftermarket cooler unless you're planning on overclocking your CPU. Now, if you do get an aftermarket cooler, it will make your CPU run cooler and it might be quieter, but you don't absolutely have to do that unless you want to. So anyways, once we get all these tightened down, the next step is to plug in the fan cable. And it's got a four pin PWN connector that's gonna match up with a CPU fan connector on the motherboard. And once you get that in, just tuck in the cable like you see here. The next step in our build is installing the RAM. And I've got two sticks of RAM I'm gonna install here. And you can see the sticker that shows you the specifications for the RAM. So we're actually gonna to have to flip it around the other way because there's a slot that's offset to one side to the left. And when you have two sticks of RAM like this, you wanna put them in the second slot and the fourth slot away from the CPU. So we've got the first one in there, and then we'll go ahead and put the second one there in the fourth slot. And it's a really common mistake to put them in the wrong slots. So just press down and then it's done. The next step in this build is to install the two power cables from the power supply to the appropriate ports on the motherboard. So I've got this motherboard mounted on an open bench table test bench. And the first cable is the 24 pin connector. And that goes in only one way. It's got a shape of the connector. And sometimes it's hard to plug in there, as you can see. After that, you plug in the eight pin connector that's at the top right of the motherboard. And that also goes in only one way. And this has caused me so much frustration over the years. If you do this inside of a case, it can be really tight to actually get this plugged in. So that's why I'd like to do it on a, a test bench like this, so it's really easy. So once you've got those plugged in, then you'll be able to turn on the system just a little bit. Since this is a mainstream AMD desktop processor, it does not have integrated graphics, so we'll have to install a graphics card. Right here is the power connector we're gonna have to also connect. So we plug this into the PCIe slot closest to the CPU, that's very important. And you seat that in there firmly, and then you're gonna have to plug in the power connector down there at the bottom. And if you get to plug in the power connector, it's not going to boot or else it might boot and show an error message depending on the exact video card. So it's an eight pin connector and I plug in both sides of it to get all eight pins plugged in and secure. All right, we're almost ready to try to turn the system on, but now we have a problem because there's no power switch on the motherboard itself. So you have to look for the front panel connector. In this case, it's labeled JFP1. And we're gonna have to go and find that and then look for the power switch pins. So here's what it looks like in a photograph. And it's very close to that CMOS battery. And so we need to find that JFP1 set of connectors. And then once we go in and look at the motherboard manual more closely, we'll see where it's labeled power switch. So there's two pins that are part of JFP1 that you have to go in and bridge with a small flat bladed screwdriver to actually turn on the system when you don't have a power switch. So now that we've got the video card in, we're gonna go ahead and turn on the system with the screwdriver and you bridge those two pins that I talked about previously and then now the CPU fan is running so you can tell that it, the system turned on. Okay, when you build a system and you turn it on for the first time, it's gonna get stuck at a prompt just like this. And it's complaining that the CPU or memory has changed. And you'll be stuck there until you do something about it. So hit F1 and you'll go into the setup for the BIOS. And then you can enter in all the correct values that you need to to proceed past this point. All right, once you have the system running, one of the first things you're probably gonna to wanna to do is to update your BIOS. So you need to go to the MSI website and find the B450 Tomahawk like I've done here. And when you get there, you'll probably be on the overview page of the website, and you wanna switch over to the support page for this motherboard. So when you do that, you're gonna see BIOS and drivers and other things that you can download from MSI, and we want the BIOS in this case. So the latest and greatest BIOS at this point is this version right here that came out on June 12, 2020. So we'll go ahead and download that. 
and it comes down pretty quick. It's a pretty small file. And then we can take a look at what's in that zip file. So when I open this up, you can see that it has a text file with release notes and it also has the actual BIOS update file right here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is copy that to the root of a USB thumb drive because then you're gonna use that to update the BIOS from the thumb drive. So it's pretty easy and you go into a utility in the BIOS to actually do the BIOS update. Once you've got the new BIOS version downloaded and transferred to the root of a thumb drive, MSI has three different ways to actually update it. The first way is with a BIOS utility called mFlash, and that's what we're going to use in a minute. You can also use Live Update 6 inside of Windows later on. And then if you need to ever update the BIOS and you don't have a CPU, for example, if you had a really old BIOS version and you try to put a third generation Ryzen in here, it's not going to work. So this particular motherboard has a feature called Flash BIOS where you can transfer that BIOS file to the root of a USB drive and rename it to msi.rom and then just turn on the system and press the Flash BIOS button. And then here's what it looks like when you're actually updating the BIOS in mFlash. And this will take several minutes to do. You want to make sure you don't turn the machine off in the middle. So now we are done with the basic assembly and testing of the system. The next step would be installing Windows 10. This is Glenn Berry and I hope you enjoyed this build video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Thanks for watching.